frozen mountains, frigid plains, and cold forests filled with creatures straight from fantasy call Fjordor home, but the world tree has been disturbed. The Colossus has awakened and has shaken the tree to its roots, conjuring the anger of Yggdrasil. We must first bring balance to the world by slaying the tree's anger, and then take down the Colossus by day 100 to make sure this never happens again. Hey, 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 my lovelies, I am your humble ringmaster, Krobata, and allow me to share with you this great saga. So raise a drink and say it with me now. Let the show begin! Here we go, waking up on this beach to get chased off immediately by Dylos right from the get-go. This is going to be a bumpy start. We received to die a few times as we were trying to set up camp, until we decided to take a step back and build this here thatch hut away from all the nasty stuff. Got some hide and got to making a bow, bolas, plop down a bed and get food cooking at nightfall. Stepping out of our thatch hut we saw we had a neighbor, a snake lady. Seeing it was decimating this poor turtle, I ventured off to make this canoe and put on a hide set as we were about to go on our first voyage. I wanted some last supplies from my base, but I got chased off by the slithering thing and almost got knocked out. Oh, oh well, time to travel along the coast to look for a shipwreck which we came across later and began looting the boxes here for some early gear like crossbows, pikes, and a metal pick. We kept up our voyage looking for a permanent base location and this waterfall in the distance showed a promising opening. Upon making it inside, it was decided to be our camp as it had water, flat surfaces, and metal, amongst other things. Day 3 and we started it off by getting more hide, and finally got our basic survival structures placed down which was a relief. Berries were picked to get narcotics going, as well as a forge and smithy combo, with metal gathering done, so smelting was also underway. It seems as though the wild beasts of this map were starting to hone in on my location as I spotted a weird goblin thingy outside my cave. I ran in hoping it did not spot me, but it ended up inside! It came into the cave! It's chasing me! And not even this cave is safe. I got up and safe spotted the intruder, ending it, revealing that it was a hobgoblin, which had some interesting loot inside and upon harvesting it, it gave us cementing paste. Possible farm potential right there. To settle in, we plopped down a bed and some spikes at the entrance to prevent future incidents such as this one. Scouting was my top priority, so a PT was a must. In our outing, we came across a friendly centaur terror bird horde along with their masters. Nice to have someone out here not wanting to end me. Low level PTs were abundant, so I settled on just this level 55. The knockout was swift and in the meantime hunted down some tech creatures for resources as I was taming it up. Once ready, Twitch chat and I dubbed it Terry Cruz. As like my 100 Days Dragon Tamer, some of this was streamed live over on Twitch. The trek home was scary as I could not ride it or pot it up and I saw that there was a war breaking out in front of me with magic spells and reapers of all things. And a chimera was at my front door. I knew this would not be easy. I tried to sneak by on my parachute, but ended up being the Reaper's meal. Oh no. Uh oh. This is a bit bad. Ow. Ah. Okay, not to worry. Our stuff is just outside, so here we go! Ah! Oh no! Oddly enough, I got alerted to her that uh, the thing had died. Seems like the spikes were the best call I've ever made in a single 100 days, so that's cool. As for Terry, he was still alive somehow. I assume the Reaper being a summon from one of the Dark Paladin dudes, it must have gone back to where it came from. Nice, so let's get him on inside and make him feel right at home. You're safe now. I somewhere found the time to tame a little Istro friend, bringing back our long lost but not forgotten buddy. Our reacquaintance was sweet, but he told me he had to go. For his country, he said, as I cried at our doorstep, as he waddled off to fight in War Thunder. It's a free-to-play competitive multiplayer game for PC and consoles. It's the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever with over 2,000 tanks, planes, helis, and ships jam-packed into a dynamic combined arms PvP. With all the vehicles detailed down to their individual parts, you'd find it hard not to be immersed in the combat. All right, buddy, we ride together, we die together. Their vehicle collection is so vast that dates all the way back to the 1920s and you get to customize your death machines with hundreds of camouflages, markings, as well as 3D decorations. Which you can appreciate thanks to their detailed graphics in 4K and admire the authentic sound effects of your enemies being shredded to pieces from the inside out as your damage x-ray shows precisely how you ruined your opponent's day. Plus, having the option to interact between air, ground, and naval combat pretty much seals the deal for us. Ain't that right, private buddy? 
So recruits, start playing today once registered with my link to get you some multiple premium vehicles, premium accounts, boosters, and much much more. And a big thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. The saddle is next on our to-do list, so turtle taken down, carrot and collected, and see another reaper spawned in to just munch me. Got the stuff back though, so no worries. Got to crafting just a bunch of stuff in hopes to level up quickly. Saddled up, Terry, and got crystal right from on top of us. Spyglass equipped, so now we can understand the world better which we find ourselves in. Day 6 and we could head out to look for some crazy creatures and Deinonychus eggs, mm, yes. When we spotted a Horoku, a friendly type of dragon that I attempted to same but figured with mutton it would be much easier, so I went on to spot this beefy boy, a level 210 drake that needs a Dragon's King's Feast to tame, so I wanted to get to level 100 super quick so I could make that. As for the eggs, pretty much everything was horrible, but at least, you know, one lucky egg came into our render, which was a level 140. So obviously I took that and went on home to uh, hatch out a plan. Before I was going to hatch them, I wanted a terminal and some things. So on day seven, we set out on a long flight to get Polly from the Swamp Island from a trike corpse. Got that, and on the way back, I saw some torpedoes in the water. Clearest sign that I've ever had to not go in the water, by the way. But yeah, terminal made in the end, and set up a torch hatching space. Day 8, babies hatched, and wow, they are not good at all, even the 140s, so these will, you know, serve to produce some fertile eggs for some good kibble at best. Berry gathering was a sector we were severely lacking in, so I set out to find a moss shops with none to be seen, but an amazing find did show itself, a level 170 Drakenthorn egg. I don't know how it got here, I don't know where its mama is, but I took it upon myself to grab that sucker and skedaddle on home with our new prize. The new egg was taking its sweet time to hatch, so I kept myself busy close by with resources, and once we finally got to hatch this bad boy, it was just so sick. Just look at this baby wyvern, it's reds and purples mixed in, it is amazing, but time for you to raise up and be our new form of transportation real soon. The moss shops were needed though, and maybe some honey. So as I flew around, we found a dead dragon tiger thing that gives us mana and upon harvesting some dragon leather. Don't know what this is for, but it must be useful later on. Only low level moss shops were seen, sadly. But day 10 is where things changed. We tamed not just Bobby here, but also Bobby the second, and lastly, Bobby the third, since better ones kept showing up all of a sudden. Honey was also collected, so that's off of the to-do list. But this world of fantasy presented us a Dagon. I do sure want me one of those. And a high level hardwood golem that seems tameable. It has great health, so let's see if we can make some uh, clay real soon to get one of these bad boys. Eleven rose and it was time to drink this potion to become the Berserker class, so that down the line we can get some sick gear and skills to hack and slash our foes. The base of course needs to be a bit more set up by now than our shabby camp, so this insanely awesome church structure was placed. Just look at this, it is amazing! Narcotics were no issue anymore with Bobby the Third. A banner was chosen to represent our tribe and place down this awesome Viking Empire boat. Just what we need to sail the treacherous seas. Heading off on our fully grown wyvern named Eclipse, we scouted for the whole day for good tames to no luck going from place to place, so we focus our efforts on narcotics. We are going to be making so, so much of these through this adventure, let me tell you. Metal was up the next day, along with a cementing paste run, ransacking the beaver villages as a viking would, I guess. Prep, build wards, long neck, and off to go look for an ovis for some mutton when we saw a smock. Insanely strong creature, sure, but we can't tame it without the right food or buff. To find the novice, I went on over to Asgard real quick to realize I didn't have flying enabled just yet on the server, but once Eclipse saved me from a wolf attack, we did manage to take flight, bringing me flashbacks of the 100 Days Dragon Tamer video. <laughs> We're flying in Asgard, baby! Let's fucking go! It's just fucking natural talent. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Sadly though, no Ovis here. 14 started off strong, ending this orc fighter, which put up a good no, fight. No reasoning with him, I suppose. Pelt was needed, so some was gathered, and I made a Berserker trainee sword until we can get some of the more endgame items. And again, going on to look for good tames. And, well, these Dark Paladins and such seem cool since they have some really cool AoE attacks here, but taming them is done at higher levels, I think. Whoa! The day after went by quick, getting Pelt, spotted a Glacier Golem, which I do want to create one later on. 
grab some drops, and finally make a whole fur set which was very needed in this frigid map. The rest was used to get ammo going. 16 and the greenhouse was underway to get kibble soon, so that was done, and making sure the dinos were making eggs. And the next day, it was essentially done with some water set up and seed gathering, with all veggie types being planted in the evening. And let me tell you, I was just steamrolling supplies, continuing to focus on tranks, kibble, cementing paste, amongst other taming supplies. And the same goes for 19, with metal, crops, kibble, darts, and you get it. You're a smart cookie. When I'm at base, those things are kept rolling at all times. But 20 marked a day of upgrades with new skills like AoE Burn and Breakaway, which will surely be helpful with me wanting to make a really ridiculous melee build. I did look into the Brewmaster profession, but not all of it seemed to unlock, so eh, maybe later we'll be able to make some brews down the line. Now, the next thing is admittedly very, very broken. I was told to try out the Death Statue for a buff. And holy moly, that boost to health, stamina, and weight is very busted. More than I would like it to be, but you can't get rid of it unless you make a brand new character is what I've been told. So for normal use, more broken than I would like it to be, but for the sake of this video, wanting to make an absolute redonkulous melee build, this opens up some possibilities for us later on. To heal up, I made these potions, which are super handy, and went off to go hunt a griffin as it would be a great taming mount, leading me to lure this high level, manage to finally end a friggin' Ovis which was in the way, and ended up getting the griffin caged. With a successful knockout on day 21 and taming it up, Bjorn was ready to take flight. Mutton was cooked back at home and trank darts were focused on 110%. But I was itching for a hunt, a fight, something intense, and I found just that. An injured Grimlock, which is a super strong boss. I mean, just look at that health pool. And with it being injured, I think this was the opportune time to try and get a huge progression leap with Eclipse, but we did have trouble even scraping it. It's so tanky and its hits are very scary. Holy, that was one hit, basically half damage. Oh, okay, okay. Needless to say, we flew back with our tail between our wings, needing to heal up and ended up doing what we do best. Narcotics. 23, resources gathered to make some behemoth gates, Prime got gathered and jumped on over to Vanaheim for some mushroom gathering. I found some, but not the rare mushrooms, so uh, later I ended up somewhere in the swamp and managed to get some there. Luckily using this mind wipe on day 24 brings our health down to a degree, still a bit busted, but leaving us with the possibility to respec all into fortitude, movement speed, and melee damage above all things. Now, this here Galregarian is just what I need as it's wielding a hammer. So I tamed her and named her Smash. Smash. This one can turn into a shop, which is a very nice mechanic, opening up the possibility to make all sorts of modded items as well as smelt mithril ingots. Now, I just need mithril ore, which I went to search for thinking killing some things might drop some. These balrogs must do nicely, I suppose. Maybe. So after a long battle, one was slain and rewarded us with a balrog ore to make our own later on, but harvesting it yielded sulfur and just normal metal ore. An Anki would do well to get some mithra from some crystal nodes, so I set out on a quest and immediately got distracted by this Alpha Rex, which I engaged in battle with Eclipse for some quick loot. Once done, I came across a high-level Brute Wyvern, which I caged up, and well, it's just gone. I don't know what happened, I turned my back and it just vanished. Maybe the golem here killed it, but it's gonzo. I left Eclipse at home, so I went to go get him with the intention of killing those ice dudes for course. Got distracted by another Dragonthorn egg, and back on my path, only to get distracted by this ogre miniboss. I would say that my attention span is bad, but you already know that. Lots of time was spent to take down this screaming Goliath, but slowly we whittled it down, and once slain, unlocked some engrams, which was really nice. It would be really helpful, I'm sure. 27, and yes, I finally got to killing ice dudes, but after a couple kills, I was still coreless. But hey, a Dralian died nearby, so I got a gem. Nice. Now, this was a cheeky yet smart little thing I did. I saw a DRX fighting a group of Ents, and I'm not passing up on the opportunity of some free loot, so once my invo was emptied out back home, I returned to the scene to grab black pearls from the deceased Ents till I was heavily encumbered. Early morning and I recruited two more Galrug something somethings since we need their charisma for some more high level recruitments. And my luck was as you would expect it to be. I saw a good brute wyvern, 
Only to see it get annihilated by some wolves under it. Come on, man. Also, remember that Anki that I wanted many days ago? Yeah, 135 spotted, knocked out, went to go grab some veggies from this abandoned village, and begin the tame. I was looking for golems in the meantime to no luck, but I came back just in time to protect our boy from sky wolves, giving me flashbacks to the necromancer 100 days. I stayed with it all day then, but unlocked Warcry, which had me a little bit excited. And there he is, Mithrilius Maximus was tamed. So I got to testing it out on Crystal ASAP to a very lackluster amount of mithril, but hey, uh, better than nothing. Cactus sap was gathered when I saw this fire elemental, which once killed gives us fire element, logically, which we need for a balrog, plus a fire elemental core. So we killed yet another just to get a little bit more of that. 3-0 and I made the recruiting badge, some metal gates, and out on another expedition to tame some stuff and things. This mini boss lich seems like a good target since, you know, I took care of that ogre so easily. But this one had other plans. Ah! Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold the phone there. Okay. Later, I came across a group of divine soldiers. The prime time to use our charismatic friend and his badge here, gaining us the power of Jeff and Paul. To end it off, I took care of this brute in front of our cave for some mana. Due to having actually tamed something, I wanted to go on a taming spree. This high level brute should be adequate, but after some failed attempts at dropping gates on it, I went back for some bear traps, only to return to see it die to some sabers under it. Man, these guys really have problems hitting things at their bellies. Nothing good was around for the entirety of the day, but that changed the next morning with a 169 level brute wyvern. Very nice. So once it was successfully trapped, we began pelting it with tranks all day long, landing the KO at midnight. Oh, down it goes. However, I could not access its invo, which made me realize that I made a big mistake. It is feral, which means since I didn't use soothing arrows on it before the KO, I can't tame it. Ah! I wasted so many darts on that. I needed to return home to gear up some more, ending up making more narcotics to decompress, which took us into day 34 doing just that. But I also went to go get some more fire elements. When I took down this dark reaper, I got some ingrams and dark loot, which is pretty cool. And did some crispy dudes for just a bit of elements. I went on home to make a fabricator because I got a good idea from Twitch chat. Day 35 had an exciting find a level 140 Hydra, but after testing its torpor, it drops insanely fast, making me realize that I would need a better long neck and some shock darts. So I went home quickly to hatch my recent Dragonthorn egg, and it's female! So soon we can breed up a flyer army. Some poly was forcefully removed from the penguins here in order to make a mining drill, which was needed to go harvest sulfur at the volcano island, as with this, we can make our own fire element which we ended up crafting the next day in the alchemy station. As for the shock darts, I went out on a voyage to find some jellies, but the whales made things rather difficult by almost breaking my oh boat. Oh no. Far from home, a group of them was spotted, so we used the entire day to take them down and harvest their biotoxin. A nice discovery was noticed as Jeff and Paul had light mana in their invos. Not sure if they produce it or just have it on them, but that's good. During my hunt this day, the world trembled as Yggdrasil had spawned somewhere, reminding us of his foul temper, so we needed to hurry up. As I was hunting, I heard an Ent's footsteps, so I looked around and saw a little baby Ent, but I need to be level 90 to tame it. So I fought this Alpha Rex nearby for some XP as I had gotten a rune, so that helped a little bit. At home, I set the wyverns to breed and continued to get sulfur and metal. And 38 was similar, hatching baby wyverns, sulfur gathering, and hunt creatures for mana to make some fire essence. 39 and I had plans, yes sir. I grabbed an XP note and then got distracted by a level 145 brute wyvern. So I went home to get my taming gear quickly, but I did not forget to nuke a ton of wyvern babies that got us 17 levels, so we were all set. The Brute Wyvern, however, got itself killed again. These are like the new Yudis, just dying all the time. So I went out for some more mana, which was just what we needed to finally activate our Balrog core to summon one in a main, oh main, does this thing look menacing. And it has great stats too, and is super useful as a walking industrial forge and can break down black pearls into dust. Wyverns were reset to breed at higher levels on day 40, and recruit up a group of divines outside of the base, leading us to have Jesse, Hannah, and Rachel on our side. Part of their group was this level 140 aura seeker, so 
I made its specialized kibble and got to tame up Jet, with even more divines being recruited under our banner later on. Now, a male Aura Seeker was needed to breed with Jet, so I was looking across the map and I heard another baby Ent and I finally had the required level. But there were so many aggressive creatures around, so after a lot of cleaning up was done, the area was clear and we began to feed it re-fertilizer. Its taming took very long, but here you go! Bootleg Groot was ready to go as a future tank for boss fights. However, I did keep up the search for a male mana seeker, and one was spotted at dawn and easily tamed up as it was very low level. Looted a dead dark reaper that died nearby, never gonna pass up on free loot, and proceed to tame this divine aloe, and considering it has a ice and wind affinity, I named it Lizard. On the way home, I tamed a low level female aloe, which was handy, and I set the aura seekers to breed as we need fertile eggs to make dark mana seekers which are more powerful. And don't you worry, the aloes were also set to breed. And just look! At this Balrog's utility, it is probably my favorite tame so far. It's so useful! Now, I'm gonna need to go get a good long neck like I mentioned, so I did some drop runs in caves, but nothing great really turned up, so I'm gonna have to repeat this a few times. Black pearls were needed for dust, so I hunted Ents and got a hefty amount, which was nice, and ended a Hydra for some mana. I continued to track down Ents for pearls when a baby female showed itself. Low level, but it'll do just fine. As on day 44, you logs was tamed, so soon we could breed some trees, I guess, if that's how it works. Ah! Ooh! Ah! Ooh! Ooh! Hey! Uh, hello. Thanks to the black pearls, we could make some dark mana, which was used for a dark mana seeker, which has amazing stats, it looks amazing, and was named Starscream. Once I logged in the next day, the Ents began their lovey-dovey time. Aloes were reset at higher levels, as well as the Wyverns. Hunted these Ents outside when I got dismounted, which was a really good fright, so I probably need to keep safe spotting singled out ones. Another loot drop hunt was done, and I got a golden longneck BP. Not ascended, sure, but I'll take what I can get. Dralians were hunted, but no gems, sadly. When I came across a Dio Rex, a super tough opponent that I wanted to take down for more Engram unlocks. I did see a bunch of orcs. They were pretty much doing all of the work for me, so I let them do the heavy lifting as their bleed seemed amazing. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, we almost died. Holy... The sun came up the next day and I was doing my best to not get eclipsed to see the afterlife, but we were super low health, so I uh, enlisted some help. You guys, help me. Come on, come on. Show some team spirit, shall we? There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, I got the kill! Let's go! Do I feel dirty after that? Absolutely. Do I care? Not really. Nice. That was tense, but it's down. Glacier Golem was also taken out of its icy misery on the way home and got a core, so maybe Balrog will get its other half pretty soon. At home, Eclipse needed to rest up after the battle, so I crafted some magic crystals and then a upgraded kinship rune, which works as a saddle for the Balrog that gives it a empowered boost. A depreciated kinship rune works as a saddle on Eclipse, so it'll be bulkier now. Ents were hunted for their black pearls, made a chainsaw later in the day, which boosted our black pearl gathering by a ton, which we did all day long. But my hunger for dark mana and Dralian gems was not sated. I kept hunting to none of those. Got another glacial core though. I feel like I'm luckier with these than the gems. A prime specimen of hydras was found and I just need me one of these. I'm desperate here. So once I got to get my gear and made some shock darts and some good long necks, I returned and tried to trap it with some metal gates. Please tell me this works. This would be a good kennel for you, my man. Alright, I think we got it. Using the terrain to our advantage. Only time will tell. I got so excited and forgot it needed to be shot with soothing arrows first, so I did that, which made it lose all the torpor that I built up since it dropped so friggin' fast, and ended up using all of my ammo without it getting pacified, so that's my last arrow. I waited all day to see if when the timer goes all the way down if it would be ready to go. 
Sadly, in the morning of day 49, it did not lose its feral state, so I went to go make more soothing arrows, but I needed more black pearls, darn it. I quickly used the opportunity to bring in another dark mana seeker, and it's a male! Oh, praise the lord! We can breed these two! Gamba avoided. The remaining dust I reverted into pearls and then hunted many, many ants all day to quickly stock up. Day 50, everyone, halfway mark, and I rushed on over to the Hydra with some soothing arrows, and as I got there, it was uh, nowhere to be seen. I can only assume it meshed into the mountain or something like that. These tames are going to make me go insane. Since I was in the area, I hunted for Dralliant to no gems being dropped, but did find a level 150 Hydra with no Feral status and good stats. This might be my only shot. I tried to repeat the last trap in between big ledges, but it did get out and was replaced by an Alpha Rex. Oh, is that an Alpha Rex in my trap? Come on, bro. Really? Oh. Even spamming gates was no good as it kept popping out. 51 and I realized that, yeah, bear traps would probably be a good idea right now, so a quick trip home was done to grab them and back on the hunt. And I was about to cage it. Just, just look at this. I uh, don't not, not that much. No! Easy, that's it. Nope. Oh my god. Okay, this is really bad. My bad luck knows no bounds. I was determined though. My will was not yet shattered as I lured it closer to the beach, set up a new trap, and finally managed to trap the dang thing. What a relief. Bjorn almost got sent to see the gates of Valhalla, but clinged on to life. What a trooper. I began the tranking process, and it was smooth sailing until I underestimated its fire range and got shredded within seconds. This just... It, it can't be happening! I rushed back on Starscream and I did a smart one, one would say. I came in from the top so the Hydra would render in at the same time as the gates, which worked perfectly to avoid it getting out. I'm glad about that, but the shock darts I used were all wasted as it lost all of its torpor, so we began the process anew, landing the KO in the mornings of day 52, leading to triple threat being named later in that day, and that's some juicy stats if I've ever seen some. I needed a breather after all of that tension, so at base I got to gathering some more metal with Balrog and some narco berries to restock. Mithril was on the metaphorical menu today to make Hydra saddled, so I was out and about with that, and a very low level male Hydra was near our base, and since triple threat has good stats on its own, this will do just fine. So I got him all trapped up, trying doubt, and use this tame helper to tame him super quick. But before this six-headed lovey-dovey time could happen, I kept at the mithril gathering and then let them do whatever the hell the heads needed to do. As I was getting more of the desired mithril, I spotted a lich fighting a archdemon, which is way too good of an opportunity to not indulge in. So after watching them go back and forth slapping the ever-living hoot out of each other, I wanted to speed things up and grab the kills, of course. So I went to go get some divine aloes pop them out at the volcano, and proceed to steamroll these edgelords. Big damage, big damage! Melt them, melt them, yeah! Let's go! Finish him off! Fuck it, easy! Yeah, that felt good! Now, time for some drop hunting where I got a purple shotgun, which sadly wasn't ascended like this Rex saddle there, but, you know, it's something. 55 was pretty much dedicated to make tons of aloe saddles as well as some for dark mana seekers, and just got to leveling a ton of our boys for coming boss fights. This leveling took us well into day 56 when I saw that even though my saddles say they go on the dark mana seekers, it doesn't work, so that's a ton of resources down the flippin' drain. But just got straight back to prepping the army's hydras and ents. The fact that ents and my seekers can't wear saddles, to my knowledge, really made me want a UT for the courage boosts. So I popped into Jotunheim and saw a long line of bad stat scream chickens when a 150 caught my eye. After some gate spamming, it was locked in place, ready to be darted down and tamed to be dubbed Chicken Taco. Since that's the last thing that I ate at that point, I guess, it, well, it's a chicken. Luckily, I had gotten this better saddle for him from one of our drop runs. Now, all the keys to fight a boss were in place. 
Grimlock shall fall in order to get holy metal to make the best berserker armor set known to man. My timing was spot on as I trapped it in this little ravine, but I was so excited that I forgot the most important part, my tames. So I got my dumb butt back home to rally the troops and here we go. I tested out its health pool by sending in small batches of dinos in and boy oh boy my tames were all melting upon entry. Even an end that I sent in stood no chance at all and I was thinking what to do and well you guessed it. Then that time tall angry on chromatic got out and went on a rampage. I was wanting to set up a whore to face him head on when I found he had fallen down into the water pretty much at the same spot where triple threat did. So we chased after him plunging ourselves into the frigid waters and it was up to the aloes as the seekers could not really reach Grimlock in the water. Funny enough, the aloes formed a little synchronized swimming starfish. Very nice, 10 out of 10. I was thinking that there was no way we would win as I saw no progress happening when all of a sudden I saw some damage numbers pop in. It was not over yet when due to absolute luck, we won the fight as he did not fight back it seems. Awesome! I managed to get some of the loot, but we needed more kills of Grimlock to make the whole set. I knew for a fact that the next fight would not be as easy since this time we got lucky with the water. And we know that he deals crazy damage, so a proper army was forged. It took me all the way from 59 to 65 to prepare this horde, leveling and saddling, and even still, I was hesitant if we could beat Grimlock once more. As ready as we could be, we set off to have another go, and surely enough, big metal bad boy thing was spotted. As I prepared my dinos for the upcoming slaughter, you could hear the drums of war pounding away in the wind. Or, well, maybe that's just my arrhythmia acting up. With all my fighters ready to throw down, it was time to descend upon our enemy. Alright everybody, it's showtime! Oh, okay, there there goes the first wave of my creatures dead. Alright, everybody. Let's go. There you go. Just brought in a new wave and dive bombed his ass. Okay, we got him to 800k. Oh shit, is he running? Oh, he got into my back line of creatures that weren't attacking, so he just took out a ton of them without even resistance. Go, 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 go! Oh, we got him pinned in the pit! Go, little lizard boys. We might have gotten him bloodied, but he is not yet mortal, so I needed to rush home for more reinforcements. Re-engaged in the fray, I sent small platoons in to keep up the pressure. But you know what's better than two important creatures falling into the water in the same place? That's right! A third one! Yep, it's in the water again, same spot. Start fighting him. I just needed to be clear that I had no hand in the fact that the boss went into the water twice. It was basically dead already, but here it is where we finished it off to get our desired holy ingots and returned on home with our prized possessions. Realizing slowly how much of our tames this one boss had taken out, and the real bosses are yet to come. The berserker set was made and I could feel the battle rage coursing through me. I had to test this out and the skills that I had unlocked. Zerker boost to upgrade my damage. AOE burn. Holy! Okay, um, note to self. I am absolutely ballin'. Rage! I may have not much more holy ingots left, but I did manage to upgrade my axes at least. And back to mithril grinding, since my hydras are meant to be my main force, and the saddles are so expensive. Expensive. I even tried in the cave, got no mithril from the blue crystals, but the other ones seemed to work just fine. And my divine troops were growing slowly but steadily. I wanted a large platoon of these, but since they can't be set to breed for logical reasons, we still needed to keep an eye out to recruit every single one that we would come across. Day 69 was a... Uh, quite adventurous, yes indeed. Starting with the usual mithril grind, but came across this Skyrim looking spot. 
I hop on into this pool filled with piratas, whacked him to pieces and proceeded to this horrible loot drop, but I saw this boulder that was awfully sus, so I broke through it to see a massive cavern. I did get one more drop in there, but decided to head back to not get distracted. Okay, this might be bad. Burn? There, die! Die, Megalos, die! Perish! Under my blade. Good thing my axes double as climbing picks, so getting out was easy peasy. On the prowl, we finally got another Dralian gem. These always make my day, since I do want to make upgraded saddles with these. A glacier golem was slain in hopes to get more ice element, but it is so hard to get any at all. Eclipse needed to see the infirmary after that, so I went on home, recruited up some more divines on the way, and got to crafting some saddles for the hydras, which allowed me to test their damage. Ooh, that is very nice. Uh oh. Okay, how about the fire? Ooh, yeah! 70 came around and I decided our cave base needed some organizing like a front gate, decorations in the church, and a decent blacksmithing area for all our crafting needs. And the building does not stop there as I went over to Vanaheim to scout for a plot of land to set up a war camp to face Yggdrasil. Some extremely high level troops were enlisted into our ranks, and then an area where the battle would be held was decided on. It would be this flat area as it has very few obstructions. So the safest place to make the war camp would be up this cliff next to it. So we used what was left of the day to set up the basics. 71, Mithril run on the way home, and finished up the war camp with beds and lights, so it was ready to go. And the smith's shop was trying to pump out just a few more Hydra saddles. The next day, and more Mithril on the way, loot check for loot with everything being garbage, hunt some dark paladins and such, and wipe off three Balrogs from the face of the earth for another core, as I wanted a sibling for our Balrog. Now with a helmet truly fitting of our role, we hunted down creatures for their mana, got rudely kicked off of our tame for burning these ends alive with our skill, so I had to show them my level 99 woodcutting skills. Let me chop you down to size. Later I crafted the desired Balrog, which meant the older and stronger one could be used for battle. So I named it, uh, I think it said Kriegsbeer, something like that, which based on Google Translate means War Beast in Norwegian. I just think it sounds really cool. Now, to test our damage, I can't believe we hadn't tried that till now. I'm about to Kamehameha you, I am only a very little bit sorry. Holy! <laughs> However, I needed to focus, as Yggdrasil needed to be beaten out of its angered state. So, in Vanaheim, we got more troops and began prepping all of our dark mana seekers in the trees. This setup was done midday of 74, so they were ready to swoop down into battle at a moment's notice. And the rest was used to desperately scrape a little bit more mythical together as the battle was about to commence. 75. The Day of Reckoning. Some of my trash hydras were set next to the war camp, many better hydras in the lodge itself, and ends at the battlefield to tank the initial aggro. It was time to fight in a battle so fierce, it would be passed on through the ages in songs and tales. It rose from the vegetation, an embodiment of pure fury. With the ends taking the aggro as planned, the mana seekers came in to dive bomb the dragon. There you go. Shred him. Tear him to pieces. Go get him. Second wave. All of these precious seekers were torn apart limb from limb, so we needed to resort to our next phase, the trash hydras from above. Hydra waterfall right here. Attack him. Ooh, there's some damage. I'm, I'm going to activate my AoE burn as well. Wave number two. And why are you not attacking? There's my AoE burn. They're, they're all confused by the Dimorphodons. They really don't even know what the f*** to do, I think. Uh, this is a little bit bad. Let me, uh, go and grab some more creatures real quick. Okay, so that phase fizzled out quickly, but we had more power to unleash as I summoned in my saddled high-level Hydras, my best squad of 16. They pushed forward like a crashing wave of fang and fire, pinning the beast against the cliffside but its anger knew no bounds and decimated my squad like it was nothing. It came down to our last resort, which is to throw enough shit at it and hope it dies. A desperate move, 
but we weren't gonna back out now. These extra Hydras are all unleveled, so setting up small batches to use AI attacks took a while every single time, but we kept on coming. And they are all dead. Let's uh, try this again, shall we? Everybody, with me. Two arms. Somehow. Get them, boys! Wait. There it is! We did it. Victory! Great victory was achieved! The world tree's rage was calmed, and a fresh seed was gathered from the corpse, ready to sprout anew. But first, all my prized Hydra saddles were gathered. Ain't no way I'm making all of these again. With our goal achieved in Vanaheim, we spent the day bringing back our things to the mainland to prepare for our upcoming trials. Now, the seed was ready to grow on day 77, and from the palm of my hand, a brand new Yggdrasil was brought to life ready to aid us against our foes. But patience is a virtue, as they say. We needed to first level up more creatures. Two more squads of divines were recruited on day 78, slowly getting to the amount that I wanted, and then got to work on our war camp in Jotunheim to face the big bad colossus within this giant ribcage area. This icy plateau would serve well as a building platform, so we set up an identical war camp like the last one. With all that being set up, Mithril again was collected, but this time I got beat out of the cave by some dark paladins and such, and it had me worried because Eclipse almost died on me. Side of our teams becoming more powerful by the day, it was time to truly put our own physical abilities to the test. And we'll do that by solo meleeing this ogre with a hundred thousand health. With a burning rage and thundering war cry, we raised our axe to cancel this boy's life subscription. Oh, man. Oh, there you go. That's where I like it. Come on, big boy. That all you got. Oh man, I'm dealing so much damage with my war cry. Yes, more rage! Yeah, we did it! Proud, powerful, and pretty surprised was what I was feeling that I managed to do that as close as it was. At base, I quickly summoned in a fire elemental, which was this dumb looking thing. But the true star of the show was needed. Yggdrasil was taken out on a cementing pace run. A bit overkill, but let's see that damage. Thank you. Oh! Oh, you're going ham! Oh, you're summoned Ents! Okay, okay, I think I think the beavers have learned their lesson. Now, with this cementing paste gathered, I could make a iron golem. Oh, you look pretty. You should be known as Cheese. To regain all that health we lost, I made some high elixirs, and restoring 25% of my massive health pool is absolutely busted in the best way possible. Day 80 and it was high time I got myself a fresh cut to look the part. As for necessities that needed to be done, I went on a spree for a few days to recruit as many divines as I could find, zap as much mithril out of the ground as I could, and cementing paste here and there. This was the same for 81, as well as day 82 and the beginning of 83 as well, but then decided to make some heavy helmets for all the divines we had in our ranks, and then tried to ascend some of them, which I finally got to work on some paladins to get some stronger versions. Hey, what's up, bud? However, Buddy here has an important reminder for all of you to use the link down below to get your hands on War Thunder. I mean, it's a free game with a massive player base and comes with gifts as the cherry on top. The time to start playing could not be better, and I hope to see you in-game. Much care was given leveling them all up and adding their helmets, which dragged far into 84, as I ended up naming all of them after my lovely patrons that support me every single month. So, honestly, everyone, thank you so, so much. But yeah, the army was helmeted, leveled, and named at the end of the day. Also, don't think for a second that I forgot about those glacial golems. I grinded their corpses down with a chainsaw to finally get a hefty amount of ice element after hunting them down all morning, and ended up finally having an ice golem of my own. It's a real beefy boy. Our armor was obviously good and axes were upgraded, but I still wanted to upgrade the armor too, so 
Yggdrasil was taken to devour Grimlock solo style. I did make sure to grab a rune before the fight in hopes to level our tree homie by a ton, and so the fight commenced and it was just booking it, looking for a way to get out of sight. We did pit it a few times, but it's a slippery little robot. And just as it seemed like the fight was over, it was, but because it vanished on me. Oh, that's, that's, that's totally fine. It's not like I'm on a time crunch here. We went on home to make us some much needed elixirs through the night. The impending boss fight had me stressing, so I went into horde leveling overdrive all through 87. And for 88 as well, but I'm happy to say that we have about 28 saddled ones or so, give or take a few, thanks to our last mithril expeditions, which is definitely a big improvement. And would you look at that, it took all of 89 and 90 as well, but I did re-level aloes and activate their AI attacks, level some seekers, as well as some ends that would be our damage soakers. And no surprises here, more leveling hydras on 91, but this was the last batch. The clock is ticking and we needed our holy ingots, so off we go to tussle once more for five metal bars of the holy variety. Just give me your ingots, damn it! This time, it was going much smoother. He was pretty much stuck under us the whole time. I was sure to grab a rune and then finish it off, and to our luck, we got not three, not four, but six ingots! That's that then. I made sure to body slam this Alpha Rex into submission for a few more levels and go on home where, at last, all armor was upgraded to the max. Just look at that armor. A thousand three hundred and seventy-five. Also, I bet you thought that I forgot about the Brewmaster thing, but I did not. I finally have my ale in hand and got to setting up some beer to be made. The battle would be tough, so I hatched up a plan. A great one, in fact. I started setting up three outposts on the outskirts of the future battlefield, filled with spare flyers, ends to take the aggro off of me should I need it, and spare sets of fur armor. This center part here is where the battle would be held and where the boss would appear, so I made a ring of ends to be the welcoming committee. This area is so insanely cold though, even with my high health I was barely holding on, so I wanted to make some cold block potions that need water essence, so I made my way over to the ocean to hunt some mermaids, proceed to reduce the megalodon population to the extinction threat level, and come to this dear interesting entity. Yes, that is the facial expression of a dead person. Sadly, it gave me no water essence, but I certainly realized that I just could have saved all this time and just crafted some myself. Three more iron golems were created and upon further inspection, look awfully a lot like Warframes, if you ask me. But yes, now with water magic, we made the cold block potions that we wanted and got to restarting the farm, gathering seeds all day long as I needed some veggies ASAP for my grandest battle to be one of legends. Trust me on this. All these leveled creatures need to be put somewhere though, so on 95 the arena was starting to fill up with creatures just itching to battle. Primarily many many aloes and some saddled hydras, quick trip home to grab some more and keep on plopping down hydras all day long. Which took us into midday of 96, but my veggies were ready, so I made some enduro stew and battle tartar, and thanks to having just a little bit of beer, a battle brew and stamina brew was made. You can all guess what my highly intelligent plan here is, right? But how could we forget? Mr. Big Slow and Leafy needed to be flown into the area as well with a prime view over the carnage. 97 and I wanted to try something which was to kill some hellfire wyverns in hopes to get some basil crystals for some explosive spear bolts, but Seems like you need to tame them in order to get the crystals. Ah, a little bit too late for that, but now you know. I did find out, though, that the sentients can wear shields. And you already know that I gotta give my Turin the best of the best. With the cementing pace run to make shields for them all, I began crafting and equipping with some occasional re-leveling. Taking us well into day 98, time's almost up, but hey, these divines are looking tough with 175 armor now. All that was left was to do one final trip to Jotunheim to bring the Splatoon on over, and at night, walk up the stairs into my church 
having a seat in the throne, and gathering my nerves for tomorrow's battle. Day 99. Anticipating a very long fight, our horde waited in silence. You could cut the tension in the icy cold air with a knife. Our platoon of divines and golems were brought out in organized fashion, with all preparations set in place. The Colossus was summoned. Alright, I'm running for my boys. Hold them up, Ents! Keep them occupied! It's time to fight back! And beat the Colossus once and for all! Let me just, uh, eat my stuff real quick. For honor! For battle! For Yggdrasil! FOR GLORY! Oh, I died so fast. It was taking me some time to get back into the battlefield, but our warriors were stronger than I could have ever imagined. They were holding on bravely, casting all sorts of spells and skills, and actually managing to withstand our opponent's blows till I returned. Gotta get back into the action. Go get him! Yeah, yeah, burn him, burn him. Oh, are some of my people reviving? Some of them revive. Yeah, it's one of the convalescents revive them. Nice, he's 200,000 health down. Divine Aloes to me. Go, 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 go. Oh man, he's really lifting him up like it's nothing. Oh, 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 okay, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I don't wanna get stopped like that. Go, go, go! Oh, that fire in the night looks so good. Come, my Hydras! With me! Down we go to our deaths together! Yeah! Ambush him! Yeah! Here they come! Oh! Whoa! Oh, he almost landed on me. Man, he's just not taking damage. The fire should be doing like 600, 700 per tick. And it's doing like 79. Alright, you know what? I have an extra plan for this. It's end time. Yes! <laughs> the end times! There we go! Get him, boys! Alright, let me see if I can get some hits in with old Big Papa over here. Wait. What? So, it despawned for some reason, so to improvise, we brought in another one with similar health to the one that we were just fighting, in order to keep it as even as possible. Yeah, he's at 1.2, it's it's similar health. Go! Go, Allos! Oh man, what is this screen? It's totally red! I can see him being under a million health now. Holy shit, something's dealing a lot of damage to it, though. But, oh, it's because he's in threat level 2. Yeah, now the fire is start starting to deal more damage. Ooh, I almost died. I almost died. Holy. Oh, he's gonna clap. Oh, no. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt very bad. Oh. Oh, no. He's gonna clap Chicken Taco. No. Oh man, he got me too! He's down to 437k. Oh, he's on threat level 3. He's on threat level 3, everybody. He's in crisis mode. We're actually dealing our full damage. Oh, 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 oh. Is he dead? Is he dead? Colossus has been defeated. Victory! It is time for a feast to celebrate the completion of this quest. Which can also be done by liking the video and subscribing if you enjoyed this tale.
Thank you so very much for joining me, and I'll be seeing you very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.